I always think there are far more discoveries to be made when you're outside exploring wild places on your doorstep or further afield. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that little audio visual taste of summer that I've experienced over the last couple of months. It's been such a joy to go out and capture the sights and sounds here on the Lizard Peninsula, particularly the wildflowers and hedgerows, but also I've loved capturing the butterflies and the bees that are so common at this time of year. What you maybe don't know or realise is that it's the first time I've seen some of these species. Perhaps in previous years I haven't been looking or noticing. But since studying wildflowers more earnestly, I have begun to see more of the creatures that hang around them. Take for instance, the six-spotted burnet moth. I had never seen one in person before this year, and now on two separate occasions I have seen them, even managed to catch them on camera. I felt like I had won the jackpot when I found several of them on a walk we did around Nares Point in July. We started the walk at Porth Hallow Cove, taking the coastal path up and around to Nares Point and across Parbian Cove onto Gillen where we took a break and I sketched. We then went inland across a number of farmers' fields, ended up at Ross Galwell Lavender Farm oh. where we spotted a couple of escaped sheep so helped herd them back in before descending back down to Porth Hallow, where we had begun our walk. Another beast that has made an appearance on our walks is the adder snake. Again, whilst we did know of their existence, and my husband actually had been bitten by one in the undergrowth a couple of years ago, we hadn't managed to spot one clearly. This time we saw it on a day where we were exploring a place we hadn't been before on the Lizard, at the Windmill Farm Nature Reserve. It's quite a fascinating place. A windmill tower built in the 17th century and used during World War II dominates the skyline. <laughs> it's metal.
and the reserve today is of particular importance for its lowland heathland habitats and the variety of rare and specialist wildlife. And as a key site for dragonflies and damselflies, 17 species are regularly recorded here. We actually brought a picnic and ate it at the top of the windmill whilst admiring the view. I also squeezed in a small sketch time as Tony explored the info centre below. We spotted the adder on our way out of the reserve, heading back towards Mullion across the heath. It was a baby snake and Tony was just about to put his foot down before he noticed something move beneath him. On another walk this summer, Tony actually encountered another adder whilst I was busy sketching a couple of metres away. I heard him shout, get the camera, get the camera. By the time I had picked it up and ran over to him, it already disappeared into the undergrowth. He said it was a lot bigger than the one we had seen at the reserve. And this time we were over on the west of Cornwall, actually just above a popular beach of Portheus Cove over at Pendine. I did wonder if all the sunbathers knew about the snakes in the undergrowth, whether they'd still walk down to the beach barefoot. Another new experience for me this summer was being filmed for the BBC's Songs of Praise programme, which will be aired this month on the 22nd of September. Filming happened at the beginning of July, and I'd prepared a few days before by sketching the church that would be featured. Here are the black and white postcards I created. It was a full day of filming, beginning in the morning with a sketch walk with my assembled sketches drawing the church, followed by chatting with the presenter about how I got sketching and what my relationship was to the area, as well as my faith. We then had a lunch break where I couldn't resist doing a sketch of the beautiful mallow flowers that were growing along the lane. Followed by an even quicker one of the coastline as the colours were so fresh. In the afternoon, we were then filmed singing inside St Windwallow. We sang for around four hours, but had plenty of breaks in between for chats as the crew moved the camera gear around. The weather held out for our filming outside, but we did have a number of downpours whilst we were inside. Amazingly, we couldn't tell because of the lighting and the thick walls of the church. As I said, if you'd like to watch it, it will be aired on BBC One on the 22nd of September. I'll leave a link in the description. One of the highlights of this summer season is getting the opportunity to sketch with others on location, whilst the weather is far more amenable and the days longer. At the end of July, I had the opportunity to meet another fellow sketchbook enthusiast, Helen C. Stark. Helen and I connected earlier in the year online, and since we found out that both of our husbands work in the same field, when she got in touch to say her family were due to visit Cornwall for a couple of weeks, we arranged to go across and meet in person. It was a delightful time and a beautiful sunny day. Tony hung out with Helen's husband and boys on the beach, whilst we went on a walk to higher ground. We sketched the scenery around Port Lunny Beach, chatted about art materials and shared our stories. We then went back to the campsite, ate a tasty cooked brunch, thanks to Mike, and sketched some of the wildflowers. If you're on my substack, Helen will be joining me on Zoom for my next drawing date on the 20th September, where our subject will be Victorian gardens. 
If you'd like to join us, just upgrade to paid for the month, then you'll also have access to all the extra videos and podcasts I've made over the year. In August, Tony and I took a mini break. We took trips out each day, visiting first the National Trust Durham Park, with its beautiful landscape gardens and house, and then the historical city of Bath, known for and named after its Roman built baths. I think we managed to walk from one end to the other, or it felt like it as we clocked up 25,000 footsteps. There were so many inspiring buildings to see, from the Royal Crescent to Bath Abbey, Pulteney Bridge to the High Street, which itself was charming, and I think they would have all made fascinating subjects to draw if we had just been able to spend more time there. This building in particular caught my eye, and I have no idea whether it is lived in or is used as office space. It seemed to be empty, but I just loved how quirky it looks, straight out of a fairy tale storybook. We also ventured across to Wales to meet up with a friend we hadn't seen in 16 years. We knew each other from when we lived in Hong Kong, and now she resides in Wales, which is funny, as that is where I grew up. What was especially lovely was that my friend now sketches on location, so we were able to sketch together. We did one sketch at a spot called the Eagle's Nest and another at the Devil's Pulpit above Tintin Abbey. Both had magnificent views of the Wye Valley, with the river to Wye snaking its way through the green landscape, lots of trees and fields and tiny houses, and Tintin Abbey below. Such a fun way to spend the day. My final drawing date I wanted to share happened just last week with my friend Crixis and another art YouTuber, Helen Cryer. Helen lives in Cornwall too and I have followed her on YouTube for the last year or so. I'd spotted she had visited Crixus's exhibition in Port Leven, and so we connected and arranged to meet in person to sketch. We chose a spot that was equidistant from us all and it turned out to be a lovely afternoon to meet. It's actually the first time I've visited Stythian's Reservoir. We met at the cafe for a drink and chatted before descending onto the sandy shores to sketch the water and view. It was really enjoyable and I loved how relaxed it felt, chatting about YouTube, our lives and experiences. Helen was lovely and shared her love of colour and art materials, which I know both Crixus and I appreciated. I've put a link in the description if you haven't yet discovered her channel and beautiful art. I always think there are far more discoveries to be made when you're outside exploring wild places on your doorstep or further afield. I found that this summer has certainly inspired me in my illustration to draw more wildlife and insects. So let me just show you some of the sketches I've been doing in my sketchbooks and what I've been turning them into. Hi guys, welcome to the studio. It's a little bit dark outside, so apologies for the light. It's also raining as well. So perfect time to actually have a quick look through my sketchbook. Hopefully you'll recognize these panels from the session I did with Crixis and Helen. As you saw, we were at Stythian Lake and I used a mix of media. Most of the sketches that you saw in the video so far actually were created in this sketchbook. I'll just give you a quick flip through. Some of them you might recognise. And the sketchbook is actually um, a creative delusion sketchbook. It's my favourite sketchbook I think at the moment, or I've been using over the season. It's been really good to take out with me. It withstands a lot of mixed media, it doesn't buckle, it doesn't warp. And yeah, generally it is a real pleasure to work in. I wanted to then share with you this sketchbook, which currently lives here in the studio. It did two years ago go out with me. And I think I have shared those sketches in a YouTube video. Um, but now I'm kind of using it for more detailed illustration work. So. I started drawing all of the flowers that I've been seeing and these were also used for my 
wildflower course. And I've just find the paper is great because it's very smooth and it withstands again a lot of different types of media. So these flowers are done using watercolours, brush pens, gouache, neocolours, pencils. And I just add to these pages every time I might see a flower that I'm really loving, interesting. I also use it for my substack when I do my process and play videos where we look at something in a bit more detail. These were created for a client and yeah, it was a really good thing to do because it's kind of pushed me into doing more wildlife as well. Something that I really wanted to do but just hadn't made time. So it's kind of pushed me to do that. And I just wanted to show you these little sketches here. So these are all goals and then we've got some seabirds and then other birds around the lizard. And I've really enjoyed researching them and then illustrating them. I then did the same with butterflies. And I think I would definitely like to add to these pages. So let me just show you what I've done so far with these illustrations. So I created these greetings cards. These are wildflower greetings <coughs> cards. So this one was created with all of the coastal wildflowers that I see. I've almost got all of them on there. Um, but yeah, I really love doing that. And this is actually the project that I do at the end for the wildflower course. So it's like an illustration project where I challenge the participants to um, do a bit more of a designed based spread but I thought it would make a great greeting card. And then this greetings card has the wildflowers and the lizard specialities. So these are wildflowers that just grow on the lizard. They may also grow in other countries, but in the UK, these are the, the special ones that we have. And then these three, I've got, which I wanted to show you, I've got butterflies, you can see all of those butterflies and then I called this one goals of the lizard as you can see based on my goal illustrations and they've been really fun to put together particularly like this guy here look at him <laughs> we have so many seagulls around and then this one which I've just called the lizard and it features a whole range of insects. Remember I spoke about the adder, there's the adder and then the six burnet moth, barn owl. Oh, I didn't tell you, I saw one recently. That was amazing. Then the coma butterfly, chuff, uh, the Cornish heath, which I mentioned, swallows, dolphins, swifts, spring squill, so all sorts of wildlife, wildflowers that you find on the lizard. So they are all up in my shop and I'm really, really happy with them. And yeah, it's been really nice to create these ranges. I'm really excited to create and paint more wildlife. And one other thing, which I know some of you have already spotted in my shop, but this is my 2025 sketchbook calendar for each month. Seasonal sketches that I've done on location. They have color palettes, they have sketchbook prompts, which could be used for a range of different creative activities. And then also you can see, you can also see I have included some of my smaller wild flower and wildlife illustration in there as well. You see the adder. Oh, and an oil beetle, which I also saw this month, this year. So you can buy these right now in my shop. I will only be ordering a limited amount, so do let me know if you want them. 
and go and find it in my shop. I'll put the link in the description below. So one last discovery I wanted to share before I go. Back in August, before I was due to host a live drawing date with Crixis on Wildflowers, I went out for an evening walk around Kynance. We just encountered some goats grazing and hiding around the rocks, so we were a little bit anxious that we might be chased by them. Thankfully, we had crossed a sty and felt sure that they wouldn't be able to follow. We trekked the path through the purple heather and fresh gorse, admiring the Cornish heath along the way, and then the path opened up onto short heathland. We were quite high up and could see the island stacks of Carnants below. As we looked to see a way down to the cove, I caught a glimpse of something in the grass. So as I got down on my hands and knees and looked a little closer, I realised that these were definitely different and not your typical blade of grass. They were curious as they had little white flowers spiralling up the stem and that's when I recognised them as Autumn Ladies Tresses. Autumn Ladies Tresses are named so as they look like the braids of a lady's hair. These are the last of the wild orchids to flower on the lizard and the first time I've spotted them in the flesh. I was so excited that I called Tony to come over and see. I've now drawn them in my sketchbook and I'm excited to see how I can include them in other pieces of work. And that's what I hope to share with you in my next video. Preparation for an upcoming exhibition and my experiments at working outside of my sketchbook on a number of different substrates and mediums. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I hope you are well and I look forward to chatting with you again soon.